Hello, everyone. Billy Peck here, part of the Major World Order, PWP Live, and a part of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. And I am here drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody. I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Drinking at Moe's be a brand ambassador. They encourage everybody to break out of that comfort zone, live their best self, which, hey, that's what got me starting the podcast. But they got great clothing, great apparel, sh- t shirts, hoodies, beanies, hats, all that good stuff. Be sure, link will be in the description, and use the code DRINKINGATMOES to get 10% off your order. Let's fucking go. All right, everybody, welcome to Drinking at Moe's. Host Big Mo here. Be sure YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit, because that YouTube algorithm is a pain in the ass. Where most places you can find your podcast today, I am excited to have with me You may have seen him doing work with the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. If you're local to me here in Omaha, you may recognize him as the voice of PWP Live, Billy Peck. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I knew, especially after I remember watching, I believe it was the vlog where the major wrestling figure podcast guys had you had you y'all in the the house together i'm like i started noticing that i'm like i'm like i knew i wanted to have you on eventually but seeing that i'm like okay i'm (laughs) i'm I'm gonna finally reach out and do it sure but uh first thing i like to start off with each of my guests especially first time is what got you started out as a fan of wrestling because you know in the stuff that you've been doing with the major wrestling figure podcast with pwp live you know you started out somewhere as a fan and then you got got your uh chance to leap in there yeah for sure um i remember uh being you know a kid i was at my next door neighbor's house and uh just you know playing with like some of the younger kids there and i remember you know one of the older brothers uh was and i think it was live i don't think it was recorded uh but they were watching wrestlemania 10 Mm. and i was not really like paying a lot of attention i saw that wrestling was on in the background didn't really know what it was and i remember one of them saying basically like oh this match is gonna suck because it's a bad guy versus a bad guy Mm. and they were talking about Shawn michaels versus the bad guy razor Uh ramon and something about like how he said that struck me as like bad guy versus bad guy because you know as as kids you know Mm. you know we watch you know cartoons or whatever and it's always good guy versus bad guy so yeah that struck me and I watched it and it's this ladder match and it's this spectacle and there's the, the titles hanging and, and all of that. And so it, that caught my attention and I was just enthralled. And uh, from there, then on out, Shawn Michaels became my favorite wrestler. You know, I, I also really liked Razor Ramon because of it. Mm-hmm. And then subsequently, and, and not even, knowing you know what we know now like because the business is so open like i really gravitated towards anyone that was part of what we would later know to be as the click so Uh sean razor diesel one two three kid hunter hearst helmsley like these were all like some of my favorite wrestlers um but sean michaels has and always will be number one for me nice i know this maybe dating me a little bit i mean my wife loves to give me shit about me being 
old. I mean, I do, I will be turning 40 here in July, but yeah, um, I'll be turning 38 in July, I think. Mm, 38. If that's not the right too far now. behind me then. No, no, not at all. But I know some of my early favorites were, I know first off, it was guys like Hogan and uh, the Road Warriors. The sure. Spike shoulder pads. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. I see the way the crowd reacted to those guys, and I'm like, oh my god, that is the coolest shit ever. Yeah. And, and then also, I also gravitated, and albeit this, I learned later in life was towards the end of his uh, life, unfortunately. But Bruiser Brody was another favorite of mine. Just the wild, just who. So. Like, Bruiser Brody is is interesting to me because I mean definitely before my time you know when I started watching wrestling but you know to give a little bit more backstory of like when I started watching like I just consumed everything that I could yeah. you know so like WWF and WCW you know obviously a little bit later but WCW like Monday Night Wars and all that were both a yeah. thing I was never a pick one or the other it was always back and forth oh yeah and um ESPN classic had like old like black and white like AWA yeah. uh uh you know matches and stuff and like it didn't matter to me I knew that it was very different than that kind of cartoon <laughs> aspect of of where you know the new gen where I was introduced, yeah. um, but I just tried to consume every bit of wrestling that I could. So Bruiser Brody was another one that would you know start to pop up on some of those ESPN Classic things, and I really enjoyed him as well. Oh yeah, no, I just remembered uh, today. I see guys like how uh, Lance Archer used to come out in New Japan, just mm-hmm. all crazy and shit. Very much reminded me back to those days of how Bruiser Brody would be coming out. And sure. I just remember seeing how the, like with the Road Warriors, like Hogan, seeing how the crowd reacted to him coming out. I was just loving every bit of it. I know one of my, and he's still, I consider him my all time favorite up to today that I joked with my wife once that if I ever got to meet this guy in particular, I don't get starstruck too often, but I don't know if I'd be able to get a word out stone cold, Steve Austin. Oh, sure. And I just remember being, you know, not to go too personal here, but I remember being back high school, junior high. And I was, I was a kid that was getting bullied. So seeing the way he was just the don't give a shit attitude, just going after whoever. And I don't know. I kind of lived vicariously through that. And just like, sure. that is just the coolest ever. And now with some of my budding, I'll say wrestling figure collection, he mm-hmm. is one of the few that it's like, okay, whatever multiples of like, different varieties of whatever i can get of his i'm like give it to me oh sure and uh i remember when i first saw you was actually going into my next topic here at pwp live and it was before i believe that you actually got in there and started doing the ring announcing and yeah, I just remember seeing you back by the soundboard there, and then before I know it, here you are getting in there. I'm like, "All right, we got a new guy in there." But then you, you've been a fixture there, and like I mentioned in the, the introduction, it's like you're like the the voice of PWP Live now. What, what was it like getting started in there, and then maybe talk about some of your favorite moments because you've actually also on a couple of occasions gotten in the ring yeah uh you know so yeah i do remember us uh you know vaguely being introduced you know when both of us were just going to the shows as as fans um and so like you know uh, again just loving wrestling and and when i discovered wrestling in omaha was 
back in like 2004 ish. Um, and, uh, you know, and then, you know, those promotions kind of, you know, went away, but, you know, uh, Magnum and PWP, you know, were around for a long time. And when I kind of started to, to rediscover the local scene, you know, was with them. And, you know, so I would go to the shows a lot and, uh, I would go to PWP and, you know, the guy that runs it, uh, Chris Havius, he oh. and I, uh, I was, so I had basically posted that like one of their events was right around my birthday. Mm. So I had posted like, this is where my birthday party is going to be. Um, so if anybody wants to come and hang out and watch wrestling for my birthday, this is where I'll be. And Chris and I had mutual friends. And so like he had picked up on that. I was going to be there and, you know, through one way or another, uh, knew that I was a fan of Ghostbusters. And so when I got there, he just, you know, he's like, hey, thanks for, you know, bringing your birthday here. It's nothing big, but here's a Ghostbusters pin. And I was like, oh, well, that's that's really nice. And um, we just started to become good friends. And a little bit more of my backstory is I'm a musician <clears throat> and I've been playing in bands for over 20 years now um and so he would like you know i my band would be opening up for a band that he was a fan of or something so he would come out to shows and then uh again we just our relationships kept forming and one of the things that comes with me being a musician and and the style of music and stuff that i do like it's a very entertaining and theatrical uh, mindset so i know how to uh talk to a crowd that you do uh thank you thank you um and, and i i i got that from performing as a musician so there uh ring announcer at the time james jeffries who i'm friends with him as well very nice guy he uh, was unable to make it to an event. And Chris is like, well, Billy knows how to present himself to a crowd. Let's see if he will fill in. So I did the one show and had a blast. And uh, James was really cool about it. Uh, he was just like, yeah, you know, if anything comes up, now I know that I've got, you know, someone that can fill in for me. And so that would happen every once in a while, once every few months, maybe I would do a, another event and then uh, COVID hit <clears throat> and uh, James Jeffrey's profession did not, it, it was not a good place for him to be in a, in a bar setting with hundreds of people all the time. Yeah. So he, uh, backed out and he put in the word you know that he would like me to be his replacement um chris was already like thinking the same thing and i became the full-time uh ring announcer there yeah and it's been a lot of great shows since i haven't been able to go at lately because my shoot job i Sure. I call podcasting kind of like a second full-time job, but I don't <laughs> hate shit. But I remember yep. that uh, I got moved to Lincoln. So mm. by the time I get back in and then with all the the interviews that I've been doing lately, it always seems like by the time I hear when a show is, I'm like, well, damn it, I already got an interview that <laughs> yeah. night. So, but there's been some great shows. One of my personal favorites and one that I always make an attempt to remember, okay, I want to go to this battle of the Phoenix. Yes. Uh, the, like the Royal They're, rumble yep. type of show. Yep. And one where 
correct me if I'm wrong, it was your first uh, venture actually jumping in the ring. Yes. So, um, and and here's where some things will tie, and I know where uh, the conversation will go eventually, but um, I... I, I had a very little thing to do prior to the, the Royal Rumble event uh, style event. Um, there was going to be a couple months where I was not going to be able to be there. Mm. Um, one of those reasons was it uh, the event was booked at the same time that I was going to be going to Baltimore. Yes, Baltimore to... Uh, take part in a major wrestling figure podcast event. So uh, between being gone one month for that and then another month for my band had a show booked, uh, I was going to be gone for a couple months. And I not only ring announce, but I do like backstage interviews. And one of the uh, wrestlers and managers, uh, Brett Bishop and Manfred Zablinski, you know, they, they were not always the kindest to me. Maybe didn't appreciate my interview style. I don't know what the case is. Yeah. Brett Bishop wins the world title and he demands that I come in and I announce him as the winner again, but he is being, he's being very degrading to me. And, um, I, reluctantly announce him again but i didn't have the level of an enthusiasm as he would have liked so his manager started to push me around i pushed him down brett bishop grabbed me and did uh essentially biggie's uh big ending uh as what he calls the checkmate and uh put me on the shelf for a couple months so to speak <laughs> yeah. um, so uh doing even just that little bit was very very fun for me i can imagine and uh i suppose you know i've i've done very little training i would not say that i am a trained wrestler but i've you know done a couple things here and there and i grasp how things go and i i think a lot of it you know is just working in my years of different facets of entertainment it it just helped me be comfortable in how to do some things and um yeah so their their battle of the phoenix uh, royal rumble style match was coming up and it's the idea started getting tossed around that you know look sometimes there are surprise entrants and uh why not have me uh be one of them and uh so you had asked earlier what was like one of my favorite moments. And uh, I think this this is definitely one of them. Um, you know, look, I'm sure everybody listening and watching this is uh, is is smart enough to know a, a lot of how the business works. Um, so. You're given a certain amount of tasks to do within your rumble spot yeah. um essentially i'm told you're going to eliminate this person and you're going to be eliminated by this person then you kind of fill in the gaps yeah. i'm supposed to be in there for four six minutes not a very long time um and we we map out how things are going to be, but I cannot eliminate that person until they've eliminated the people that they're supposed to. Ah. So they take a long time. I am now going from, you know, a, let's just call it a, a five minute spot to maybe like a fifteen minute spot, <laughs> and wrestlers are like picking me up grabbing me uh telling me like all right let's do this and i'm like oh boy uh <laughs> okay time to work fast there's no thinking about it but i'm in my mind going like man i hope i don't mess this up because 
I don't really know what I'm doing. And and to my surprise and and I think others and you know, I'm not trying to, you know, boast or or be conceited or anything, but like I was pretty proud of of how I handled myself in that situation. And it went well and I gave uh Brett Bishop, he was another surprise entrant because he had semi retired, I suppose. Yeah. Um, he came in and I was able to get my redemption on him from when he previously attacked me. I gave him the super kick. Moonshine Russell helped me eliminate him. And then, even though him and I are buddies, me and Moonshine, it is every man for himself, and Moonshine <laughs> eliminated me. Yep. Those, those uh, rumble shows. Yeah. <laughs> That's the common thing they always say, every man for himself. But uh, one of my personal favorites, and I think that knowing the, the way that things were locally at the time, I think made for this surprise entrant the year that it happened, a little extra like, holy shit moment. Yes. When the... God rest his soul, Jason Strife mm -hmm. came out and was an entrant in the Battle of the Phoenix. And yeah, and that was not the same one I was in. That was a couple well, of years ago. Yeah, that, that was that was yeah, that was before that one. Yes. Yeah. But I I just remember thinking like I got introduced to independent wrestling when I was stationed in the Navy down in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Magnum Wrestling was doing showcase matches at different promotions down there ah. and i remember he did one that i might be remembering this wrong but there was one that it was against the guy that became ricardo rodriguez in yeah. wwe he went by chimera at the time oh sure. under a under a mask mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm like I wanted to go talk to Strife after the match because I'm like, holy shit, they said Council Bluffs. I'm like, I'm right from there. I'm right. originally from about an hour south. So I'm like going up and then he talks about Magnum up here. I come and then boom, here I am. Uh, I got a personal connection with PWP because lo and behold, Brandon Juarez, mm -hmm. he was the man that had been convincing me to try to make it to PWP show for a while. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, after not even being there for like maybe 30 minutes, he's like, I got somebody I want you to meet. And then boom, here I am now almost married four years to her. Yeah. And we mentioned the guy that runs PWP, Chris Havius. We actually convinced him to get ordained and he officiated. And it was Amazing. just fun. No, it was just funny for me thinking back because my parents, before I started getting out there to more of the shows, they were like, you really think you're going to meet anybody there? And then literally the day of the wedding, I walked up to my dad laughing my ass off. And I'm like, I remember when you told me that. And it's, it was just a cool thing. And then. Another thing that you have been lucky enough to be a part of the your own podcast, and you're involved in a few, but sure. Major World Order, mm -hmm. part of Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. What got that started? Because you guys, along with a guy that we'll talk about later, uh, Ethan Page, really mm. got me back into wanting to collect like sure. wrestling figures funko pops that sort of thing what was it like getting major world orders started and then getting involved with the major wrestling figure podcast yeah i mean look these th this is where like you know i'm incredibly fortunate and like who would have known any of this kind of stuff would have happened uh <laughs> but you know, the major wrestling figure podcast, you know, became very popular amongst the figure uh, world. Uh, I, I would say that 
you know, um, they, and it's not because of my involvement. They are the forefront of figure, you know, collecting in the wrestling world. And um, there was some podcasts and stuff that, that talked about it or had videos about it, but not like these guys did, Plus, yeah. you know, and, you know, for those who may not know, you know, it's, it's ran by Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, and Mark Sterling, you know, formerly Zach Ryder, Kurt Hawkins of WWE and Mark Sterling of AEW. Um, yeah. Yeah. So they, um, they had that name with them and, you know, so I, so I, I mentioned that, you know, Shawn Michaels was my favorite. Yeah. Eventually, you have to, you know, like have new favorites. Yeah. And I was a big fan of Matt and Brian when they came in as the major brothers and the edge heads. Mm. But then like when Zack Ryder, like, you know, cut his hair, he had the short spiky hair, the headbands, the one legged tights, the woo, woo, woo and all of that. Like I was hooked. Oh, uh, yeah. Like. People think I'm nuts for this, but even back then and it's not always about the wrestling it's it's and this is all different you know long story stuff but sometimes it's about the drive and and what you put into your profession and all of that so Zack Ryder like legit became my second favorite wrestler oh no um, totally so following his career major wrestling figure podcast starts uh big fan of both of them start listening they have a patreon i joined that they have a private facebook group and that is you know when i started there was maybe or when i joined the the facebook group there was maybe only like 300 people in it and uh only 300 people including them posting about your collections and the new things that you pick up or what are you looking for and all that, you start to form relationships and bonds. Mm -hmm. So I had met a, a couple guys, uh, Andrew Husvar and Jake Wyatt, who the three of us became very fast friends. And Jake, you know, like we have like a Facebook chat and he just basically was like, we should just call ourselves the major world order, <laughs> you know? And it, it was like, just, just a group of friends. Yeah. And me being, uh, the creative type of person that I am and the rapport that we always had, like we got along so well. I was like, you know, like for those that listen to the major wrestling figure podcast, Matt, Brian, and Mark are so good about like talking about people from within the community. I bought this thing from this person and they might tell a little story about that person. Um, and as you become a regular listener, you start to recognize these different names, of yeah. just fans. And I was like, you know, this community is so strong. There's essentially a built in audience. You, uh, you we always hear about these these different fans why don't we start a podcast and we interview and get to know the people that you hear about on the show and it, it's not you know it becomes fans but it's also like side characters from the podcast and yeah. and, and and people like that so like it very much became this thing of let's interview people within the community the guys, the day one were so supportive of it and like retweeting our stuff and it, sharing our stuff on Instagram and telling their fans to listen to us. Um, they, they were amazing about that kind of thing. And over time, you know, so like Matt instantly was just like, I want to be on the show. Like, we mm. wanted him on <laughs> yeah. and we were going to wait for like, Oh, well let's do like an episode 25 or something like a big episode. And he's like, uh, uh, let's do it now. You know? So he was like episode <laughs> like four or something like that. Um, 
And, you know, so we've been very lucky to interview all three of the hosts, Matt, Mark, and Brian. Um, We've, and, and it's, while we largely interview people from the community, they, uh, you know, have given us the opportunity to interview people that they are connected to. So we've, mm. we've interviewed like Hornswoggle or Chelsea mm. Green or Rhino or the people that wrote Brian's theme music or mm. just a number of people like that. And so they, they saw all the hard work we were putting in. They were doing like virtual events. They asked us to host one of them. Uh, we had Dan Housen on it. We had Ethan Page, who you mentioned. Uh, we had Luke Gallows and just a number of people that are all, again, connected to them. And they gave this, us this opportunity to, to have them on. Colt Cabana, Alex Reynolds from The Dark Order. And mm. again, just so many cool people um, that they just put all this trust into us. So then at their live events, which they do like four, three, four a year uh, in different parts of the country, they will do like, they'll do their live podcast. They'll, it, it's almost like a Royal Rumble of guests. Anybody can <laughs> show up and you know, be a surprise. And then they talk about their figures or stories and then they move on to the next guest. And, you know, it's a really cool show. And after the show's done, they do a meet and greet. And then after the meet and greet's done, everybody still kind of hangs out. And so they're like, we kind of want to keep this party going. Yeah. Once the show is done, does the major world order want to be essentially the official hosts of the after parties? Nice. So then we started going to all these events, like not only just as fans, but as the host of their after parties. Nice. So nice. doing stuff like that, getting to know them more on a personal level, having fun, again, showing their, uh, earning their trust. Me. And with my background in music and, and so many things, like I know how to set up the production of a show. And again, <laughs> I know that this is all such like the big, long winded answer. <laughs> Podcasters, of course, talk too much. <laughs> um, but um, they needed help in like, Hey, these microphones aren't working or how do we get this to work? Well, I know how to do all that. So I would just like, start working and get things done eventually um some stuff started to come up they asked if i would help with video production you know make some some uh, uh video packages to promote something help with some graphic stuff uh all kind of like freelance work and then it turned into like hey would you like to officially be part of the team would you like to be like our employee essentially um be on the payroll mm. and um so now i have a number of duties that i do for them a lot of kind of like what i've already said um now i like fully moderate their facebook group um i i run a good portion of their social media their twitter their facebook uh their Instagram it's it's largely Matt does some uh, Mark will do a little bit it's usually me and this other guy named D Freedom um a lot of I, I'm not the, and not being literal here but nine times out of ten if you see a post on their Twitter or Instagram I'm more than likely the person who posted it nowadays gotcha. um, so I, I do a lot of that. And again, I still help with video packages and promoting stuff. And, and at their live shows, um, I help run the door, help get people in. I help get the guests, you know, to the stage. Uh, I make, sometimes I have to make their, their Titan Trons because they may not have one. Um, so I, I, I have a lot of duties that I do for them now. And, uh, you know, like, I, I was just in Los Angeles a couple weeks ago now at the, the end of March, beginning of April. And um, I actually started off their show. I, I kicked off into the pay-per-view, 
you know, the right. pay-per-view was actually hosted by Josh Chernoff, but I was the one that kicked it off. And, you know, so like oh. I'm up there on stage. If you watch the pay-per-view, I'm up there and I'm running the computer and, you know, getting the crowd into it, kind of hyping them up before the show starts. And uh, so it, it's it's been very, very cool, a very fulfilling thing that I never really thought that I would have done. And, you know, it's afforded me some really cool things. Like you said, you know, you saw that vlog where I'm hanging out with them at the house. You know, I got to stay with them for, you know, several days and, you know, driving around with them, you know, a car ride with just me and Matt, you know, I give a lot of input and they do some of it or, you know, whatever. So um, <laughs> anyway, talk, 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> It's no. a lot of fun, and I'm very fortunate, honored, and lucky. No, definitely, and it's anybody that has watched or listened to any other stuff, they're very knowledgeable, not just of wrestling figures, but especially lately, I've been hearing a bunch on Ninja Turtles, Jurassic mm -hmm. Park, and it got me thinking wrestling and non what would you say is like a favorite figure line mm. that you can think of that's out there right now like for me i like a lot of the i'm a big ninja turtle guy wrestling ninja Same. turtles my my two things and it's hard to show I'll, but I, I got these ninja turtle tattoos nice nice i know that uh the line of figures they've come out based on the original movies. Those yes. are some like, they're just amazing. Oh yeah. From, from NECA. Yeah. yeah. And I have a, probably one of my favorite non wrestling figures that I have right now, a 30th anniversary super shredder from mm. the movie. And yep, it, it's like, just the detail with the cape and, and the cape and yep. all that. And it's just yep, like, I have that. That that's one of my absolute favorites. But what would you say is a favorite wrestling and maybe a non wrestling related figure line out there for you? Um, currently, currently. Okay, okay. Um, man, yeah, I I would have to, you know, probably go with. The neck and Ninja Turtles, whether it be the movies or the cartoons, like the, the cartoons are like for some people, it's starting to turn them off a little bit for me, like because I'm such a, a fan, like they're going like really deep into characters that maybe were in one episode or something. But I love that stuff. Yeah, I've been noticing that a little bit myself. So I I really enjoy that. Um, and I'm a big horror movie guy. So, you know, really a lot of what NECA puts out are, are is so good, um, whether it be like they're, you know, Michael Myers or Puppet Master or Freddy Krueger, or, you know, any of that stuff. Like I, I collect a lot of that stuff. So, again, really any of these like movie lines that NECA puts mm. out, I'm probably into a lot of it. That that those are some very good ones. They do put out some just amazingly detailed figures yeah the ninja turtle ones both the movies and the cartoon ones that some of the best cartoon ones out there yeah. really yeah and then for wrestling um i i mean and i collect a lot of different stuff but to try and get to specific lines i really like the wwe superstars lines Mm. that are like the original um AWA Remco style like the big muscular he-man type yeah um i really like those and i you know it, it's, it may seem biased but the major wrestling figure podcast has their own line of figures called major that, bendies that they do yeah and i really love those cuz i was a big fan of the original WWF uh, just toys bendums line uh -huh. so the majors now they put out current people and people that would have fit in that original line so i'm a really big fan of that as well oh no definitely they do very great work with those bendies i mean 
you mentioned current people. I know the uh, one that I hear about a lot is the one for Effie. Dude, hear that one's it's like legit maybe like their best one yet it is so cool and detailed and here's the thing like they're not for those that don't know like they're not supposed to be like the neko you know movie turtles like it's not supposed to be like screen accurate like they are supposed to be like a cheaper style looking kind of cartoonish figure but um man his is so so good it is um and yeah, Effie rules. Uh, he's so cool. And, you know, so like there's that. And like they just released like a British bulldog that would have fit mm-hmm. in the original line. And he has the the leather vest with the heart foundation on the back. Like that's uh, another one that may be a little more simple, but man, it just nails like that 1990, you know, 596 toy line. Mm. So. No, yeah, definitely. And I know for me personally, like I mentioned, non-wrestling, the Ninja Turtles, the movie figures, I have, uh, well, one that I actually found that I actually got autographed at one of the last Mm -hmm. Revolver shows Mm -hmm. that I have here with me that I bought, I believe, with uh, the major wrestling figure podcast little discount code. This uh, use code major to save 10% at the end on ringsidecollectibles.com. Yep. These legends of Lucha Libre figures. Mm-hmm. I got the Taya Valkyrie one that I, like I mentioned, got signed at the, the last yep. one of the last revolver shows. And yeah, one, boss fight uh, studios made that. And it's a great looking figure that, that they are. And like, you wouldn't tell looking at the back picture it looks kind of like what the heck like like you see some people that like literally draw on their eyebrows and they look all thick and weird sure it looks kind of like that but then you look at the actual figure itself and it's like it looks amazing right and that's kind of some of it dude (laughs) being so involved into the the figure business that i am now like it's so interesting like what i've come to learn and find out and like so much of it could be just the way the lighting was when that picture was taken that just, just throws off the features just a little bit and makes it go like oh but you see it in person it's like oh this actually isn't that bad exactly then you know what you bring up a good point that i hadn't really even thought of it that is a very good point and other ones that i like i never really had the opportunity growing up having too many of the figures i had some of the uh the damn the original uh, i can help you out i know them all the were they like the big rubber guys? No, the smaller ones. Like that... the smaller, like maybe like four inch that like they didn't really move, but like their arms might. Yes. Okay. Th- those are Hasbro. Hasbro's. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It was right on the top of my head. I had yep. no, a right. bunch of those and they might still be at my parents' house. I don't know. But lately I've been get, really getting into the, and this one. One that holds a special place to me because it's one of the first ones my wife ever actually got me. Oh, nice. The that Brock Lesnar Ultimate. Yeah. Brock from Lesnar Mattel. Ultimate edition with the the two belts. Mm-hmm. I got that and the Ultimate Warrior. And just some of the details that go into these ultimates are just amazing. Like even yeah. down to the belts and some of these alternate heads it's like wow yeah for sure for sure yeah you know especially the ultimates you know it comes with even more extra accessories it comes with even more articulation uh yeah they're they're nice um kind of going off of that topic what would you say is like one of your like we don't have to go into specific lines but like a, a figure that hasn't been released yet, but is on the the line to getting released that you're looking forward to. Sure. Um, 
you know, again, I, uh, a lot of it could seem, you know, like biased because of my working with the majors, but, you know, again, I, I started as a fan yeah. and, you know, so now like their next line is, you know, so I mentioned, you know, was it the big rubber guys that you're talking about? It, it, so yeah. that there, there was a figure line in the day called LJN. Fans, yep. And there's been attempts to recreate them, but not a, none of them have been great. They are putting out some new ones, and they're they're really really good. So Matt and Brian have some of those coming out, and then. Um, there's a comp a couple companies that um you know it's very popular right now to recreate that Hasbro style line. Yeah. Mattel and WWE are doing it now with they're they're just called retros. Yeah. Um the the best and most popular person uh doing them is a guy named Zombie Sailor Toys. Yeah, I've um, heard a lot about him. His are incredible. Um, he and, uh, another new company called, um, so zombies is, uh, heels and faces. And then there's mm. another new company coming out called, uh, grapplers and gimmicks. Mm. And they both just coincidentally happen to at the same time, but they're both working on different Ahmed Johnson figures. I remember I, I listened just about every week to major wrestling figure podcast and mm -hmm. i i remember them bringing that up quite a bit <laughs> right and there's a lot of stuff behind it there's drama there's this there's that i don't care about any of that um as a fan uh and being a kid in you know 1996 when ahmed johnson was wrestling man i loved that guy uh, same here i go back and watch it now and i see that he's pretty sloppy yeah. But like at that time, like there wasn't like anyone else like him, his build, you know, his look his he was bombastic. You know, it, it was yeah. it was a, a sight to see. It was exciting. And, yeah. you know, he had. Well, and I actually have all of them. He at that time, he got. One, two, three or five figures. And then that's it. <laughs> He's never had another another figure figure since I don't know ninety seven maybe at the the latest. You know because <laughs> he wasn't in WWF that long. He went to WCW. Never got a figure after that. It, never did say. anything else after that. Really. Yeah. So he hasn't had anything this entire time. Um, and now they're putting out figures of Ahmed Johnson. So I'm really excited about it. Oh no, I can I can't say I blame you. I know I've 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 liked the out of the Hasbro lines the the Hasbro esque figures yes. the the heels and faces ones. There's been a number of those that I've really been like, man, I wish I want to get my hands on some of those. Well, and you know, here here is part of of an issue, and and I don't know, maybe maybe why you haven't quite pulled the trigger is. These are smaller, independently ran companies. Yeah. Because of that, you know, Mattel, that Brock Lesnar that you have, I don't know exact numbers, but they probably made like 50,000 of those. Probably, yeah. Um, That figure is like 35 bucks. And it comes with all this stuff. It's highly articulated. It's six inches. It's like it is an action figure. Yeah. It is Mattel putting that out, who, you know, owns Barbie and Hot Wheels. And like they are huge. They are a yeah. million billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. And for those that may not know, like the business side of it, you know, 50,000 figures, the more you get made the less production costs cost heels and faces other companies like that small independently ran companies they're only making a few thousand of these like two three five thousand figures now you know, we're talking you know 
like 45,000 less figures. Yeah. Now we're talking not as articulated. Instead of six inches, it's like four inches. But the figure costs like 40 bucks. How does that figure cost $5 more than this super poseable action production costs are very wildly different. So I don't know if that's, you know, and, and with the amount of them that come out, there's not a lot. So they sell out fast. Those might be the reasons why people wouldn't be able to get them, you know, is, is, Hey, I get it. You don't want to spend $40 on this little hunk of plastic, but they look beautiful. Oh yeah. No, there's been some, like I've been, uh, I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, they made a Ethan Page one, I believe. Okay, so that's another company uh, called Chella Toys. Ah, Uh, Chella uh, folded, and now they're kind of split between a few different uh, companies. It's a little confusing. Um, But yes, they made an Ethan Page. They've put out some stuff. Their stuff is... uh, you know, a little back and forth. Some of it looks really good. Some of it is not as good. Gotcha. Um, again, that's kind of the trials and tribulations of a small independent company working on a very small budget. Very, but very. Yes, they put out that Ethan Page. Because, like I said, I'm I'm a fan of his as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, AEW, they somewhere down the line, they're supposed to be coming out with one of his, but with they d- they don't like push them out as frequently as let's say WWE with some of their lines. Sure. So who knows when we're gonna get that? So whenever I think of wanting to try to add an Ethan Page figure, that's the one that ends up coming up more often than not. Right. Right. Yeah. He has two, and then very like paint uh you know variants but um you know he's he's got that cella and then he has one from a another company called uh figure toy company ah, yes. uh, ftc and again they're not the best quality so mm-hmm. everybody's really waiting for like when do we get this jazz wears aew figure yeah. um, um eagerly anticipating that one yep i would say because I, I believe that there was a rumbling of he would be in a future line. So I, th- I think that I think within like a year, we may see like at least a digital render, and then maybe <laughs> sometime next year, um, he would have a figure. I'm nice. only guessing, but I, yeah. I could see that being a, a good possibility. I can I can see that. Now, going into the figure podcast and the collecting aspect of things, got two kind of questions here. What would you say is a most unique item in your collection? And maybe if it's different than the unique item, what is the favorite item of yours? Wow. Uh, huh. I, I suppose I'll go with some kind of more sentimental mm. type things. Um, you know, uh, like I mentioned, Shawn Michaels, Zack Ryder, favorite wrestlers. Um, I have had for quite some time assigned. Uh, Mattel Zack Ryder figure with the one legged tights and all that. And I, I had Matt sign that. And it got me thinking, I was like, you know, like I would really like to have my first wrestling figure now in, in the like 96, I think is when it was, they came out with um, a new style of mm. high, more articulated figures, the bone crunching ah, figures. Yes, the bone crunchers. So my fair, my first one was the blue tiger stripe Shawn Michaels figure. Nice. I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I need to get that. 
I, I now I already had it, but loose. I'm mostly a loose collector. Mm. Um, so I was like, it would be nice to have an original one still mint on card signed by Shawn Michaels. That, that would be epic. And I have that. Nice. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it's very interesting how I ended up uh, making this all work. Um, I'll try to give the condensed version of this story. And, okay. and um, it, it, it all, it all works together. It's the Shawn yeah. Michaels, it's the Zack Ryder um, and sticking with collectibles. I don't have many, but I, um, I was in um, Dallas for WrestleMania 32 when Zack Ryder won the intercontinental title. Oh, yes. Flash forward, fast forward, whatever, <laughs> um, to um, last year's Royal Rumble that took place in Dallas. And now I am doing work with the, the major pod. I'm like, you know what? It's Dallas. I'm with Matt Cardona, who the last time he wrestled in Dallas, he won the Intercontinental title. I need to get one of those Intercontinental title replicas mm. and have him sign it in Dallas where he won it. D that, would, that would be epic, yeah. So I did that. Same weekend, Shawn Michaels is doing a signing at WWE Access. Mm. I got that belt signed by him too because he also held the white Intercontinental title. That he did. So... I have the, it was my first time ever meeting Sean it was very cool. Um, I have one side of it signed in nice red paint pin by Sean Michaels. And then the other side in nice purple paint pin by Zach Ryder. Nice. I've yet to own any of the title replicas. And that's what I was saying. I don't have many. I have that. I have a winged Eagle and my wife has a rated R spinny belt. Signed nice. by Edge. Nice. I um, have. Uh, oh yeah. I speaking of Edge, one of my favorite items. I have the if space enough on the year, but the Elimination Chamber DVD cover where it looks like he's biting the cage. Yeah. I met him at World of Wheels and got that signed by him. I got it. Oh yeah. Up. Yep. Yeah, I was. Oh. I was there. My wife and I went to that and. um yeah. Uh, what did we have him sign? Um, one of them was, uh, I think it was a Survivor Series poster, but it's him standing there with a chainsaw, and it was like a big event oh, poster. Yeah. Had him sign that, and had him sign something else, but I can't think of what it was right now. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No. Um, and, uh, oh, I was just thinking another favorite item of mine that i actually got from doing the podcast with this guy deathmatch legend alex cologne mm -hmm. i did an episode with him which was a bucket list item because i was a huge and still am a huge fan of his sure he, he mentioned after we stopped recording that he was getting ready to invest in some new kick pads and was trying to sell off the old ones Yes. And I was like, well, how much are you wanting? And he said, make me an offer. So I did. He accepted it. And I have yet to get these framed, but I have signed ring worn kick pads from Alex Cologne. Yeah. Um, they're going to be prime spot. That's non figure related. You know, and, and at this point, it's even the, you know, the guys say it like it's, wrestling figure but really it's more mm. pop culture collecting yeah no i'm i get you there so yeah i think that's really cool that you have those oh yeah and mid uh promotion here mostly in iowa mid death pro yeah they did a show here in omaha recently and not realizing when i bought my ticket that it included um an entry into a raffle for a signed match used thing 
I didn't realize I won until the promoter walks up and hands me a section of a door that was used in a match signed by everybody, a blood spot still staining the door. Cool. But uh, non wrestling related, I am rather proud of this one that uh, a friend of mine invited me to go with him to when Jason David Frank was doing a signing at uh, Krypton, I believe. Yep. And I'm like, you know what? I went and I bought Green Ranger Fungo Pop signed by Jason David Frank. And just thinking that, you know, a couple months later, the tragedy that happened with him just made this even that more special. And also on the side for the movie that is yet to be released. They're still working on it. Signed card from him in there with it. That's incredible. No, I, uh, uh, I've, I've, I am fortunate enough that I had met him before. Um, but there was an item, uh, that I specifically wanted to get signed by him. Uh, and you know, the way that they were doing, you know, the signing was, you know, it was like increments of when you could go. And my band had a show Uh and timing just, it didn't work out. So I couldn't go. And I was like, well, I'll have another opportunity, but you don't always have that opportunity. And that's the thing, you know, there's that post that's been going around on social media, the angry wrestler vet one where it's like, don't take a picture, but it's like, really with the last year with, you know, with Jason, David Frank, with the Jason strife with um, Jay Briscoe, it's like you never know when you're not going to have that opportunity anymore. Yeah. So you know what? You get the opportunity. Go ahead and take it. Yep. Yeah. But uh, to kind of round things off, I got two categories. One's a bit of a name game, where you know I, as much as possible, try to theme it a little towards the guests. Sure. This this one some. People have been in the major wrestling figure podcast, whether on the the uh, major pod network or whatever it might be. Yeah. And well, I'll start off with this one. I mentioned that he well, and you give me your thoughts on him. I, yeah. I don't think I mentioned that, but anyways, first one I mentioned him a little bit ago. That was another one of the guys that got me into back into collecting Ethan page. Yeah. Um, I've never uh, personally met him, but have had nice interactions with him said he, he was uh, loosely part of our show for this live virtual thing that we did. And uh, yeah, nice guy that I enjoy the work that he puts out. Oh, me too. I'm, I don't think I've missed an episode of his, uh, weekly toy hunts for a very long time yep i've seen just about all of them next one a guy that has been featured on his toy hunts and has been involved with the major wrestling figure podcast swoggle oh (laughs) yeah um uh yeah i i love uh any time that i've been around him uh always pleasant uh comes up and always like gives me a great big hug and uh you yeah, know we had him on our show the major world order and like the first um several minutes was just him poking fun at me <laughs> and uh he was he's he's great and uh i've always have have had very nice interactions with him in person as well that is awesome. I, I always get a kick out of when I see him on some of the shows, whether it be major wrestling figure podcasts or, you know, Ethan yeah. Pickett's toy hunts, although he hasn't been on there in a little bit. Sure. But uh, next one, he's, I guess, recently started his own podcast on the major pod network. Heath or Heath Slater. Yeah. Okay. Like Man, he is a, a just a trip. 
Um, now I, another one that I have definitely met and talked to, but like, I wouldn't say that we have a relationship or anything, but, um, <laughs> he is just genuinely sweet and funny. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say about him. No, he definitely, he definitely gives off that vibe. Yeah. For sure. Last but not least for the name game, a guy that I know he might correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he was on the last uh, lot major pod live thing that we were talking about. I believe he might've been on a couple times, but I actually got to see him live down at uh, AEW in Kansas city. Platinum Max Caster. Oh yeah. Um, another guy I've, I've met him a couple times, uh, no relationship with him. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, again, like, what a talent. Um, he's just so creative. Definitely. And he thinks differently of, of how to approach things. So, um, you know, one of the shows that I saw him at for the major pod shows I saw him at, he you know, just did his usual shtick. He he did a, a really great rap, making fun of some of the other guests, scissoring people, you know, all that. This last one, um, him and Mark Sterling have had this back and forth where Max Caster will put on his own shows and he's doing rap stuff and fun things. And then Mark will come out and he'll be, mm. you know, the 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 paunch lawyer and he'll, you know, just like nobody wants to listen to your rap crap. They want sophistication and he'll do poetry or something. I I remember seeing the vlog from the Jericho cruise. Yes. That which always ends in Mark getting attacked um, <laughs> at the major pod live 2000 in uh, Los Angeles. It was the other way around. Uh, Max Caster came out and um, you know, he, he came out in the suit jacket and he's like, you guys are talking about children's toys while being sponsored by Pep's Blue Ribbon. You know, you are you are soliciting minors. I am calling the cops <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm not going to go into everything he said. It was really funny. Um, I not again, not just because I work for them. If you're into watching like live shows and stuff, I really, really highly recommend uh, checking out Major Wrestling Figure Podcasts Live 2000 on the premier streaming network. It's like a $15 uh, pay-per-view, but every single guest was amazing. And Platinum Max, super funny in an entirely different way. Nobody's <laughs> seen. So. I'm I'm gonna try. I'm definitely gonna try to get my eyes on that because it's one of those things with him. This like I like you mentioned, very creative. So I I just love how you know you never know from one week to the next how is he gonna come up with his rap for this person versus yeah. that person. It's a level of creativity I don't know if I'll ever have. Yeah, I mean, and look, you know, I've mentioned that, you know, I'm a creative type of person, but what he does, I absolutely could never even attempt to do. <laughs> it would be horrible. Oh, yeah, no, people would be paying me to stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, second category, I have kind of random questions. I never really know what I'm going to put in until I'm putting together my notes. Love it. But you, you just give me your first first answer that pops into your head. Okay. First one, one of the only ones that I generally try to keep in. Craziest in-match moment that you have witnessed, whether being live in a crowd or, you know, at one of the PWP live events. Wow. Um that's loaded. Uh, I'll go. I'll go with this. I, I can't say that it's like just the craziest thing I've ever seen. But I went to um, San Francisco for WrestleMania 31, mm. and that was 
one of the first, actually that might've, I, I could be wrong here, but I think that was the first NXT show that like traveled outside of Florida and it's before they did like pay-per-views and stuff. Oh, before the traveling uh, takeover events. Yes. Yes. So the next, uh, the following year, I, I think that was the one that was like the proving point. Mm. And Vince was there because he usually didn't go to them. Vince was there and was like, okay, this is great. Let's start doing live shows. That Those first takeovers, takeover Brooklyn, Dallas, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so it's WrestleMania weekend. It is a small arena full of the craziest, most rabid wrestling fans excited. And say what you will about you know them over the years, it doesn't matter. But at one point, Enzo and Cass were the hottest people in mm-hmm. wrestling it, as it, far it, as it, excitement yeah. and all of that. Oh yeah, I you got to give that to them. They, they like when they NXT. came out, right? When they came out and Enzo's doing his stuff, much like Max Caster, incredibly mm-hmm. creative on the microphone. Oh. That roof, that it, it just everything about it. The crowd is like the loudest, most mm-hmm. amped up crowd I've ever been around. I that would be something to behold. Being able to be there live, I have yet to actually attend a pay-per-view of really any kind from the major promotion. Like I've been to my podcast. I got invited out to warrior wrestling when they Mm. had their St. Louis stop. And I become quite good friends with a lot of people in that promotion. I've been to revolver shows that sure. I mean, at one point before the uh, fight plus deal those were technically pay-per-views so sure. I've, I've been to those but yeah yeah wrestlemania but, that stuff you know it's it's different oh and that's yeah. okay but it's yeah no and like i witnessed my fair share of crazy moments at some of those like warrior wrestling there was well jonah now back yes. to bronson reed yeah. going up against jeff cobb Oh, yeah. And, I bet that was cool. Oh, God. They would chop each other so hard. You could see the individual beads of sweat just flying off of them. Yeah. And then at the, uh, well, one of the last uh, Revolver shows I went to, I've become decent friends with Jake Chris and his manager, mm-hmm. uh, Bobby Olson. And they had what I consider my first legit death match. Because there's a lot of promotions out there that'll say, oh, Texas Deathmatch, and it's basically uh, no disqualification. Yeah, it's just like a hardcore match. Hardcore. No DQ, yeah. Yeah. This was like, I consider my first legit Deathmatch, where like they had just gotten done with a Monsters Ball match, the match before. Yeah. Thumbtacks and all sorts of shit. All so you have to amp it way up past that it has to be a different style yeah i get you and they they started it off with a bang because they were getting ready to clean jake comes rolling in he's like fuck this shit leave it let's go i like that then it ended with a bang because they took four folding chairs bridged two panes of glass onto those folding chairs and then i see his manager Bobby rolling in there and then I see him pull a thing of lighter fluid out of his pocket. They lit the panes of glass on fire. Oh, sure. That right there, hands down craziest thing I've ever seen in a wrestling event. Yeah. Bar none. Cool. Although I did sit front row for a no rope barbed wire match once. That was pretty much the whole thing was insanity. Yeah. But uh, going on to next thing, we talked a lot about wrestling figures in the podcast. And I know a couple months ago, the rest, major wrestling figure podcast did like a year in review thing where they did like their list of the best and some of their what they thought was some of the worst. Oh, yes. 
Yes. And I know a lot of them really dug into the uh, AEW's LJN style Darby Allen, which yes. I do have in my collection because I would like to eventually, whenever they release more, just keep on getting sure. those ones. What would you say is, in your opinion, one of the worst? Oh, boy. Uh, see, this this is tough for me. Like, I'm sure there's <clears throat> something floating around in my mind that I'd be able to pick out. But I am the type of person that I don't really dwell on the negative yeah. too much. I'm, so, I'm like, thinking. if it's something that sucks, I kind of just stop thinking about it and I just move on. Well, um, there was I'm, a uh, th- there was a uh, Ember Moon uh, basic figure mm. that came out a couple years ago that was pretty bad. Uh, so maybe maybe that's up there for one of the worst. I don't know. I'm sure there's probably even worse than that. But I I get you there. I'm I'm in a lot of ways the same way. Like. I know a lot of people get very particular about this or that when it comes to figures. Although I will admit recently there was a, uh, a Cody Rhodes figure after one, I think one of his first after he returned to WWE where just at least the picture that I saw of it, of the facial scan it looked like he w- you remember that uh video of the little kid that kind of looked Darby Allen esque, but he was like, I like turtles. Yeah. It looked like that. Um it might have been a I, I, I think I don't know. I, I think I might recall what that was. I, I kind of feel like that might have been an AEW figure. Um it- but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, it, it, yeah, it might be. And then, well, speaking of an AEW one that I don't know, at least the pictures I've seen of it, which I generally like the AEW figures that have one of one of the belts, the world title, the TNT yeah. title, whatever it might yeah. be. But the Miro one with the TNT title, at least the figure I saw, it looked like one side of his face was looking kind of droopy, like he had Bell's palsy or something. Yeah, you know, and some of that too can just be like, again, another thing that I've learned about all of this is um, there's a new way of putting like paint applications on figures mm. and it's it's essentially like a spray mist. So like, ah. if you look real close, like you'll see like, essentially almost like a spray or like little dots or whatever Mm. and if if that figure is turned just a slight hair and then it does that spray mist if it throws the whole thing off Mm. so a lot of times it can be something like that um the cody could have been to that uh when they did his first one back to wwe like you said it was a basic um they didn't make a cody rhodes head that fast Uh, it's one of the original cody rhodes head scans now updated to try and look like uh, the new cody rhodes so you know like he would have had black hair and you know slightly different you know younger facial features and now they're trying to do you know so i don't know it could have been anything like that oh no definitely understandable now, I always like to have some somewhat non-wrestling related ones in here. Yeah. So, I came up with this one. Who would you say, if you had the choice, would play you in a movie about <laughs> yourself? Uh, boy. Um, it's funny. Uh, MWO just had this, uh, this question asked on our most recent podcast. Um, so for the longest time and like, I don't necessarily see it, but like 
I think it might have been like the way I had my hair at one point and I, you know, the black flame framed glasses. Um, people had told me that I reminded them of Johnny Depp in uh, the movie Secret Window. Hmm. So like, and I've gotten that a lot and, and I don't necessarily like see it. So like, I, anytime this question would come up be like i don't know johnny depp i guess but like he's also like 20 years older than me like how is somebody <laughs> 20 years older than me gonna play me you yeah. know um so then i just chalked it up to i don't know the guy that was in the latest season of stranger things with the long hair that was a rocker dude um his name was eddie i don't know his name in the or his <laughs> real name I don't know, but we'll we'll go with you know something like that. I can't remember who I would pick for that, but I know one time that out of the countless amounts of Luke Combs concerts that my wife and oh. I have gone to, yeah, there was one time I guess I was wearing the the flannel, the beard, the hat. Somebody was like, "Dude, you could get mistaken for Luke Combs." So I'm like. Okay, sweet. <laughs> I guess that might be some, although, yeah, like I, I don't know that he's, I guess, not really an actor, but I guess, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll I go with him. Sure. <laughs> although, one I was just remembering, country music related, but uh, when we were going over unique items. Yes, I remember talking about this recently with somebody. I was at a Dirks Bentley concert over at Stir Cove, mm -hmm. and I was like, I would just wanted to go early, see how close I could get. Well, little do I know, partway through the show, he's talking about where his beer drinkers are at, and I was just like, Whoa! and then before I know it, he's pointing and over towards my direction i'm looking around like he is not pointing at me is he and then before i know it that little concrete path in the middle they got there he's walking over helping the security guys get me over the barricade and before i know it i'm shotgunning a beer on stage with him wow and later on he points back at me towards the end of the concert and <laughs> he grabs a guitar that one of those guitar guys was playing and starts motioning for something to write with. And I'm just shaking my head. No, no. But he signs it, walks over and hands it to me. His guitar, his guitar. I got it down. Wow. In my basement. Incredible. It, that one, that one, along with the sign kick pads, they'll probably be relatively close together. When I finally get my man cave set up. Yeah. I'm, Oh man, but like I said, unique item that I am definitely proud of. Incredible the, story. The security guys helped me back over the barricade at the end of the show to walk around to get back to my car because they're like, you're not walking back through that with that thing. Uh -uh. <laughs> Last but not least, back to the questions. What would you say with your work with major wrestling figure podcasts or with PWP live some of the best advice you would give for anybody wanting to maybe try to make that leap into doing ring announcing or getting into well really life in general because a lot of the answers that I've been given for this question have also been able to be tied into just life in general yeah yeah um so many people let outside people influence them uh friends family you know whatever you know um you know look you do have to be realistic in the sense of whatever you want to do has to be within your means to some degree you know yeah. like, like look if if you're living paycheck to paycheck or something and you need to pay bills, you have to pay bills, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so like that does come first. Yeah. Outside of that, 
as long as it's not hurting anyone, no one can tell you that you can't or shouldn't do something. If you have the passion to do something, you have to take the steps. You cannot go, ah, well, you know, they'll never accept me or or I'll wait and see if they come to me. Like, no, 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 no. You have Oops. to go and do it. Like, you know, d- did I seek out to be a ring announcer for BWP? No. Um, did I seek out to work for the Major Wrestling Figure podcast? No. But all the things, all the experience that I've had built up to opportunities happening. Yeah. It only happened because of hard work. Yeah. So if you have the passion to do something, do what you've got to do to make that happen. Whether it's, yeah. you know, if it's playing guitar, if you, again, do it within your means you want to get a nice guitar well maybe you can't afford a nice guitar right now you can still go get like a hundred dollar guitar instead of a thousand dollar guitar maybe you don't have the money to pay for weekly lessons well you can buy a book or look stuff up on youtube on how to learn a chord or you know a, a chord progression or something um there are ways that you can do it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if you want, if, if you learn how to play and you get, if you get good or you're moderate or whatever, and you're like, okay, now it's time for me to try and get in a band. Um, you go audition for a band. Maybe it doesn't work out. It doesn't mean you failed. <laughs> Failure is, is a learning ability. <laughs> um, take what you learned from not getting accepted in that band or working at that wrestling promotion or whatever. And okay, maybe I need to work on this or maybe I need to take a different approach. You have to put in the work. <laughs> and I don't know, I, I guess that's the, the I could keep going, but that, that's kind <laughs> of the basics of it. <laughs> no, it, very great advice because I mean, heck, even with me starting this podcast, it started with me reaching out to wrestlers that I knew locally. Mm-hmm. Like very first episode was Pat Powers. I and, remember seeing you record that. And then it went on to other guys wrestling for Magnum. Mm-hmm. I then all of a sudden I started, I remember specifically because I, one of my favorites from when I was out in California, the new age Punisher B-Boy loved him. He did work out with the CZW. I believe he's in their hall of fame right now, Mm. but one of my absolute favorites, I tweeted something about like retweeted something of his, and then these guys ended up liking it and it happened to be. The SATs, the Spanish announced team, mm. the guys that invented the Spanish fly. Oh, wow. And I was like, holy crap. And I just happened to be like, you know what? Here, I got this. I don't know how likely it's going to be that you'll even want to do it, but here. And boom, here. they were all for it. And then, heck that led to me getting an interview with uh, ring of honor ambassador, Carrie Silken. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Jonah, I got uh, him with a warrior wrestling. And speaking of warrior wrestling, if I didn't start the podcast, I wouldn't have been getting featured in their uh, pay-per-view pre-shows, which I'd been actually featured in, frequently as of late so it's like like you said you you never know the answer that you won't get an answer basically if you don't ask if you don't go out there and just shoot your shot basically if you got a right go for it and a thing i'll add on top of it too is 
um, as you're starting. Now, that this doesn't necessarily mean later down the road after you've been very experienced or whatever, but don't be afraid to do things for free. <clears throat> um, I, again, you can, <laughs> after you've been doing things for a long time, like know your worth, make sure yeah. that you're getting paid to do the thing that you, you know, uh, have crafted yourself to do. Like, but at first, you know, uh, some of, you know, why I think, you know, that I, I got the major wrestling figure podcast stuff was because like, uh, I noticed that, you know, Matt needed some music made for a, a project he was doing. Oh, oh. I can do that. And I just, here you go. You know? And then he's like, Hey, can you do this again? Well, can you do this? Oh, Hey, like, would you do this for some money? Like, you know, again, like some of that is, is how this all came about too, is you show your worth, you show oh. your professionalism. If, if they like what you're doing, maybe they'll do something with you. And maybe, you know, maybe if this major wrestling figure podcast stuff didn't work out for me, but now I build a relationship with them and, and, and a, a little bit of a resume. Well, now this thing has something going on. Maybe I can show them what I've done. Now I have a proof of concept and oh. then say, Hey, if you need this, this is what I've done. Yeah. Um, as you've been doing the thing, for a long time again then you should know your worth and don't don't just you know cower to people and be like oh well can you do this for me or blah 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 um yeah uh, for people starting out be willing to do a lot for nothing yeah your the experiences that you gain will be worth something oh, versus yeah. money oh, money yeah if you're lucky, you know, when you do it right and you're very good at what you do will come later. <laughs> and, you know, funny thing with that, the last warrior show, they were shouting me out a lot and it got joked a little bit about me being the third man in the booth that night. Mm. And I'm, I kind of jokingly said, you know what? I like the sound of that. Let's make it happen. <laughs> and Later on, they were like talking again about me third man in the booth and they said is big mo they're like is mo getting part of our pain like i, I don't i don't know so it's like hmm now they got me thinking but hey stuff happens if you're putting in the hard work you know like you said having the passion not being afraid to initially do stuff for nothing or next to nothing and then before you know it you've built yourself up to where you're making a good deal of money off of something that you love doing. Yes. Yep. You know, and, and, you know, again, some uh, it's a, a thing to, to differentiate is, is this a thing that you want to be your career or is it a thing that you just have a passion and want to have fun? Like, look, I, I love doing this stuff with PWP. Um, I'm not, you know, going to make a ton of money off of that. And that's okay. I don't, yeah. that something like that. I don't care to, because I just, I'm, I enjoy being part of it and you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, now if, and this will never happen, but if like somehow like WWE was like, Oh, Hey, we like his announce style. Well then that's different. You know? Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, uh, do the thing because you're passionate for it. Mm. And then again, if you get very good at it and in demand, then maybe, maybe you can also make money at it. Well, definitely, definitely great advice. Well, that is about all I have, but before we go, plug your shit, where can people find you social media wise? So if they don't already have their eyes on major world order or, if they're one of the living under the rock and don't have their eyes on major wrestling figure podcasts or your own 
stuff, where mm-hmm. can they find you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, if you want to find what I'm doing more directly, um, I suppose it would be my podcast, The Major World Order. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Major World Order. We have a YouTube.com slash Major World Order uh, where, you know, we just we do like a lot of different travel vlogs. You know, we go to these live events. And so we'll, you know, like what you saw, that was the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast live show vlog. We do a live show vlog that is from the fans' perspective, and so there, there, it's like a nice um, companion piece. So that's kind of stuff that we put out on our channel, and then, um, yeah, you know, if you're into the local wrestling scene in Omaha, please check out PWP Live, and if you're not. Like, you know, if you've been listening to all this and you're like, man, all this figure talks got me kind of feeling nostalgic for wrestling figures or whatever, you've got to check out the major wrestling figure podcast, mm. which is uh, on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all at major WF pod. And then they have a TikTok that's major pod network and uh, YouTube dot com slash major pod network. So yeah, if you look up Major WF Pod, Major Pod Network, it'll all come up. Um, and uh, yeah, say that's as far as wrestling goes. Those are the three things that you can look for me at. Definitely, and we'll have all the information in the description. But again, thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. I've been looking forward to this episode, and best of luck out there with Major World Order. Made and all the stuff that you're doing and even your your band that you're a part of i know you're very passionate about that too yeah yeah and and man here's the thing there's so much stuff that i could talk about outside of just wrestling that i'm involved in (laughs) we'll just try and keep this simple and leave it with the wrestling stuff if if, we'll leave it with that for now if you uh enjoyed my stories you can hit up major world order you know wherever i said and be like hey like i would like to check out your music feel free definitely Um, that that that, that's the simple way to put it definitely no problem there well again thank you (laughs) no problem i appreciate you uh asking me to be on